Hello comrades, uh, my name is Rob Sewell and I've been asked to chair the, this uh, session, it's the final session of the school. And uh, it's on the subject of building the Revolutionary Party. But uh, before we, uh, we begin, I'd like to say a few words. First of all, how, how, how brilliant this school has been for all concerned. Under the circumstances, it's uh, an amazing uh, achievement. The latest figures I've seen is that there, there are 6,500 almost people who have registered for the school. <clears throat> and in fact, uh, people have been registering every day. Hundreds of people have been registered on a daily basis. It's quite remarkable. There's um, over 115 countries are participating in this school. Again, incredible. <clears throat> but uh, I want to uh, draw your attention to uh, those comrades who are acting um, and playing a terrific role behind the scenes. Without which, uh, obviously, would would not have a successful school. They're doing a great job. And to give you an idea, there are thirteen teams of translators involved. There's a, a technical team, which uh, composes a whole variety of, pe of people, uh, video editors and streamers. We have a uh, social media team, uh, graphic designers team, even a team which is called chat, chat supporters. And uh, without the the work of these comrades, uh, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't get where we are. That's for sure. Of course, uh, we want to thank all the speakers for their participation. Those who have um, formally led off, and those who have participated. But uh, the information I've got is that um, uh, those involved in all this work uh, account accounts for 150 comrades from different countries. And, you know, I want to recognize the, uh, the importance and the enormous effort that these comrades have put in in order to make this such a success. <coughs> um, now, I'd like to also uh, underline the point we've had a fantastic uh, Financial collection, the biggest ever. But uh, as you would expect, if you haven't already given and you'd like to give, it would be much appreciated. Uh, 
In fact, we won't announce the final, final, final amount until the end of this session. So there's a bit of time if you want to uh, add add to the amount. It'll be uh, it'll be great. And uh, hopefully you'll be really inspired by the um, report that's going to be given in a minute. Just on, on another note, uh, I think that uh, we should send uh, particularly greetings to Esteban Volkov. It is now we're almost on the anniversary, the 80th anniversary of the assassination of Leon Trotsky. And uh, obviously we, we're going to have a meeting about that on the 20th of August. But in particular, I'd like the school to uh, send greetings to uh, Esteban and uh, wish him well. And thank you for his uh, help and assistance uh, to the international and uh, the support he's given over the years. I'd also like to uh, send some um, message from the Alexei Petrov from uh, Petersburg. who uh, recently was involved in, a, in an accident, which meant he had to go to hospital, but he's now out of hospital, I'm, I'm glad to say. And uh, I'm sure that uh, everyone in the school would like to send uh, greetings to him and wish him a speedy recovery. And now to the final uh, session of this great school. The building of the Revolutionary Party. And I'd like to introduce uh, Comrade uh, Hoki Martin, who's uh, a, a member of the editorial board of the uh, In Defense of Marxism. and a, a leading member of the uh, IMT. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Jorge. Well, uh, comrades, I think we will all agree that this has been the most successful world school of the international Marxist tendency ever. The, the coronavirus pandemic has forced us to hold this meeting online. <coughs> And so we've, we've not been able to uh, see each other face to face. And that clearly has some uh, disadvantages. But clearly it also has some advantages ha having a meeting online. It means that thousands of workers and youth from all over the world who 
who will have not been able to attend a world school of the IMT, Uh, this time they have been able to participate in the discussions and, and in the in the school. Uh, and they will have not been able to attend, not, not only in some cases because of the lack of uh, resources to travel and so on. But, but also because of the racist rest immigration restrictions on the movement of people imposed by the different capitalist states. And so this time with this online meeting, we've had a more a stronger feeling of internationalism. The latest figures that I've been uh, given say that we have had a total of 6,357 people registered to the school. From 116 different countries around the world. Uh, and you should know that when we started with this uh, idea of an online school, we, we were thinking about uh, a target of uh, attendance of perhaps 2,000, 3,000, and that seemed uh, uh, difficult to achieve, uh, an ambitious target. It has been very impressive. The largest delegation to participate has been from Pakistan with more than 800 people uh, registered. Uh, uh, from Brazil with more than 600 people uh, registered from all over the country. But we have had a real uh, international spread of participation. From the United States, the belly of the beast of uh, world imperialism, to Chile. From Norway to Greece from uh, Morocco to South Africa, from Russia to Sri Lanka, from Canada to Taiwan. And uh, I've been asked to uh, read again the, the list of countries represented in the school. So here we go, I'll go uh, slowly and perhaps this doesn't need uh, translation or not all of them need translation. But I think it gives a, a real feeling of the, the, the scope of this school. So we've, we've had participation from Pakistan, Brazil, the United Kingdom, Britain, uh, Canada, the United States, Estados Unidos, India, Mexico, Italy, Switzerland, France, Sweden, Russia, Spain, Germany, Austria, the former Yugoslavia from, from the different countries uh, there, El Salvador, 
Colombia, Greece, Denmark, Venezuela, Bangladesh, Poland, South Africa, Belgium, Argentina, Bolivia, Chile, Nigeria, the Netherlands, Peru, United Arab Emirates, Nepal, Guatemala, Turkey, Honduras, Sri Lanka, Portugal, Australia, Uruguay, Morocco, Algeria, Israel, Ecuador, Ukraine. Please slow down for the Chinese translators. Ukraine, Sudan, Norway, Liberia, China, Malaysia, Albania, Lebanon, Ireland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, Nicaragua, Kyrgyzstan, Egypt, Belarus, Zimbabwe, Taiwan, Singapore, Saudi Arabia, the Philippines, Japan, Costa Rica, Tunisia, Timor-Leste, Slovakia, Cyprus, Bahrain, Paraguay, Oman, Mauritania, Luxembourg, Latvia, Kuwait, Kenya, Kazakhstan, Jordan, Haiti, Cuba, Burma, Bulgaria, the Western Sahara, Vietnam, Thailand, Tanzania, Syria, Romania, Qatar, Puerto Rico, Peru, Panama, New Zealand, Moldova, Madagascar, Lithuania, Iceland, Guyana, Ghana, Georgia, Finland, Fiji, Ethiopia, Chad, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Angola. That, that was a long list and it took a long time to read it. But it gives you an idea of the interest in the ideas of Marxism. You have to realize that in some of these countries, it is illegal. Uh, comrades are risking their lives to defend the, the ideas of Marxism. It will seem that the only country where we have had no one attending is the Vatican City. Although you, you might be surprised to know that when we look at the statistics for the Marxist.com website, There is one regular follower from, from the Vatican City. We, we don't know who, who is. The, the school has taken place in a, in a mood, I think, of real enthusiasm. In many countries, comrades have gathered together where possible to follow the school in groups. And you have seen the images, some of the images in, uh, on social media. But I wanted to give you two examples. 
in Chile, a, a building worker who is a member of a trade union contacted us saying, uh, asking for help on how to connect to the school because he wanted to follow this, the school from his building site with the volume up so that his workmates could listen in. In Toronto, a comrade who works as a janitor in, in a building He said that uh, electricians and painters at his workplace had asked him to, to turn the volume up so that they could also follow what he was listening into. This confirms that uh, the ideas of Marxism uh, and, and not uh, aimed at academics or intellectuals. Uh, the people who can best understand the ideas of Marxism are uh, uh, workers, working class people. This enthusiasm was reflected in the extraordinary collection that we had the first day. Which broke all records and targets. So, so far we have raised more than 225,000 euro. And in addition to that, we have raised 45,000 euros from the donations that people made when they registered for the school in order to cover the organizing costs. So that, that will make a total of donations of 270,000 euro. But we think we can raise a little bit more. If you, if you liked the school and, and you want to make an additional contribution, You can, you can still go to donate.marxist.com and we will announce the total final figure at the end of this session. The, the reason why we're holding this Marxist university is clearly the defense of revolutionary Marxist ideas. And Lenin once said that without revolutionary theory, there is no revolutionary movement. For us, and I think uh, we have demonstrated this during the talks this week, the ideas of Marx, Engels, Lenin and Trotsky are more relevant today than ever. But however, our aim is not simply the study of Marxism for intellectual gratification. Uh, Marx said in his thesis on Feuerbach 
philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point is to change it. We, we are not bookworms, we are revolutionary activists. And for us, theory must be a guide to action. And this is why we are building the international Marxist tendency all over the world. And, and I would like to invite all of those of you who are listening, who are not members of the IMT yet, to join us in the struggle for socialism. And if you're not yet convinced, let's have a discussion and we will undertake to, to convince you of this. The International Marxist Tendency is a revolutionary Marxist organization. which currently has sections in 27 different countries. In, uh, in Canada, in uh, the United States, Mexico, El Salvador, Venezuela, Bolivia, Brazil, Argentina, Sweden, Denmark, Belgium, Australia, sorry, Austria, we just uh, got it uh, in a summarized version, Austria, Holland, Germany, Switzerland, Poland, the former Yugoslavia, France, Britain, Spain, it Italy, Greece, Russia, Indonesia, Pakistan, Nigeria, and New Zealand. We have also have organized work that, that is groups of organized comrades in another 13 countries. In uh, Honduras, Guatemala, Colombia, Chile, Norway, Morocco, South Africa, India, Taiwan, Australia, Portugal, and the Czech Republic, and Slovakia. And we, we obviously have groups uh, of sympathizers or contacts or individual, mem or individual members in many other countries around the world. The growing interest in our ideas has been reflected in the visits to the website. Which have gone up during the, the pandemic and the lockdown. When the real character of capitalism was revealed to, to millions of people. In March and April, the number of page views for the website in defense of Marxism, marxist.com, were 40% higher than in the same period, in the same two months in 2019.
And if you compare the visits for March and April to those of the two previous months on January and February, the increase was 65%. In those two months, we, we, we've had nearly 1 million page views to our site. And if you take the last five months, that is since, since the pandemic hit uh, Europe, we have had 1.8 million page views. If you take uh, one year from July to July, we have had 3.8 million page views. Every day we get an average of 10,000 page views. But that figure went up to an, a daily average of 17,000 during March, April and May. In the last one year, the countries that have had the most visitors to In Defense of Marxism are the following. The United States with 365,000 visitors. Mexico is the second in the list with 185,000 visitors. Britain with 146,000. India with 78,000. And then Spain, the Spanish state with 70,000 uh, visitors. This gives you a small idea of, of the reach of our ideas and the amount of interest that there is for, for, for revolutionary Marxism and our analysis. The website is a massive resource with, with uh, theory, history, analysis, news. which is translated into 49 different languages. Although obviously not all these languages have all the, the material. We, we rely mostly on volunteer uh, translators. We, we, uh, we have material in the following languages. In Basque, Esperanto, Japanese, Georgian, Kurdish, Belarusian, Pashto, Hindi, Malay, Albanian, Arabic, Dutch, French, Bahasa Indonesia, Catalan, Chinese, Danish, German, Persian, Greek, Hebrew, Galician, Italian, Korean, Macedonian, Norwegian, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Romanian, Slovenian, 
Serbo Croatian, which is one language, despite what the, what the reactionary chauvinist might uh, attempt. Swedish, Turkish, Vietnamese, Urdu, Hungarian, Bengali, Gaelic, Spanish, Nepali, Thai, Czech, Burmese, Finnish, Kyrgyz, Bulgarian, and Tamil. Continuing on the question of uh, Marxist theory, we, we also have a very successful publishing house in English. Which is called Well Read Books. And in the last year, we have published a number of new books. The Great Betrayal, which is a book by Alan Woods on, on the Spanish uh, Revolution in the 1970s. The Permanent Revolution and Results and Prospects by uh, Trotsky. State and Revolution by Lenin with a new introduction. The first five years of the Comintern in one volume. Uh, in reality, if you think about it, the, the sales of our online bookshop have multiplied during the lockdown. By, by more than four times over. Uh, and it's clear that there is a growing interest in our ideas, which in the last few months has led to the establishment of new groups and nucleus of the IMT in several countries. And just in the last few months, we have set up a new group in Guatemala and in Chile, in the American continent. There is, there is widespread interest in the IMT in India. Where we already have established groups in uh, Tamil Nadu, in Delhi and in Kashmir, in Kashmir who are working towards the establishing of a section of the IMT in that country. We are also in discussions with a group of comrades in Sri Lanka who, who want to join the IMT. A first nucleus has also been established in Taiwan. And in the last few weeks, the work of the IMT has been put on a very sound footing in South Africa. The, the IMT is both uh, relatively new, but also a very old organization. As Fred Weston explained in, in the session about the history of the IMT, the, the international Marxist tendency was reestablished in 1992. after we were bureaucratically expelled by the, by the CWI.
but uh, our tradition go 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 much further back our tradition is that of of ted grant who was the main leader of the Workers International League in Britain in the 1930s. And, and he used to say that, that, that there was a member in the organization at that time who, who had been a member of the first the second and the third internationals. That is our tradition, that is our heritage, and we're proud of it. Uh, in the last few months, obviously, uh, the lockdown has affected our work. We have had to change the methods, but, but not the ideas. Most of our meetings have, have had to, to take place online. But we have maintained our organization together. we have given a sharp political response to the crisis of capitalism. The different sections have moved uh, to printing, the, to, to producing the papers online to, to a digital edition. Increasing the regularity of the production of political uh, material. Making full use of, of the possibilities of, uh, of uh, technique with, with the production of video broadcasts. discussion meetings and online Marxist schools, which have been very successful. And this has attracted hundreds of new comrades to the organization in, in uh, to, to the IMT in the different countries. including uh, many, many uh, people who have approached us from countries where the IMT was not present before this time. We, have, we, had, a, we had a very successful uh, uh, online May Day rally. which has had 15,000 views online. Now, the, the IMT has a, an, a section in the United States, which, as you understand, is perhaps the most important country from the point of view of world revolution. In two and a half years, the comrades have doubled their numbers. And in the last year alone, they have grown by 58%. We have now 25 branches across the country. From from New York to Los Angeles, and from Minneapolis to Houston. The comrades have uh, maintained a principled position during the Sanders movement in 2016 and in this year's primaries.
we did not endorse Sanders as he was standing as the candidate of a capitalist uh, party. But the comrades uh, made an excellent campaign in connecting with all those who were attracted by Sanders because he was calling himself a socialist. Uh, and at the same time explaining the, the dead end of the Democratic Party and the need for, for a mass socialist party. So when Sanders announced that he was stepping down from the primaries, the comrades received hundreds of requests of people who wanted to join the organization. There are, there are members there are members of the IMT in 60 different cities and towns in the United States. And the comrades are intervening energetically in the Black Lives Matter uprising. In Canada, the organization has also grown very rapidly. Spreading across the country. In less than three years, the comrades have doubled their numbers. We now have a very strong position in Toronto, where we have over 150 members. The comrades organize a very successful uh, winter Marxist school every year in uh, Montreal. Which this year had 250 people attending. And that was that was uh, surpassed by in May when they had 300 attend a national online Marxist school. The, the Canadian section of the IMT, which is called Fight Back La Riposte Socialiste, is is now really the, the largest organization on the left. And their, and their regular schools and education meetings are the biggest Marxist meetings in Canada, probably going back to the 1980s. The, the IMT also has a very important section in Brazil. The Esquerda Marxista, the Marxist left. Which uh, for, for a period of time was the only organization raising the slogan of Bolsonaro out, Fora Bolsonaro. Well, ev well, everyone else in the left, they were saying, oh, no, there's a fascist regime in, in uh, Brazil. We can't do anything. It's, it's, it's not possible. But in fact, our comrades explain, uh, uh, yes, Bolsonaro is a dangerous reactionary right wing demagogue.
but in fact his but in fact his government is very weak and there have been already several mass movements against him by workers and youth our section our section has grown significantly this year thirty five percent since the first of january thirty three percent since March when the beginning of the pandemic in in Brazil they have organized hundreds of people in uh, bolsonaro out committees during the pandemic. And the comrades have a number of very important trade union positions, which they have won over years of work. It has to be said that uh, w when the Brazilian comrades joined the, the IMT, The reason that we met, the reason that we, we started discussion was, was the fact that they were the leading uh, the occupied factories movement in uh, Brazil about 15 years ago. So this is a youthful organization. But, but one which has deep roots in the working class movement and a very proud tradition. The work of the British comrades of the IMT has also seen uh, substantial progress. In, in the last one year, we have grown by 48%. Our university work is very developed and we now have presence in 38 different university campuses across the, the whole country. And with, this for, and with these forces, we intervened energetically in the Corbyn movement over the last five years. Of course, we, we defended and campaigned for Corbyn against the right wing. But at the same time, we argued the need for a clear socialist program. Uh, we criticized the shortcomings of Corbyn's approach. Insisting that the, there was a need to launch a, a clear, a, a, an all out offensive against the right wing. particularly on the question of the democratic selection of MPs, members of parliament. Last, last October, the comrades organized a national education school called the, the Revolution School with uh, 250 in, in attendance. The Italian section of the IMT is called Sinistra Classe Rivoluzione. Which means uh, left 
class, working class and revolution. And uh, it's an organization with modest uh, numbers. But over the years, the comrades have built a very important, very strong trade union uh, presence. We have six comrades who are members of the National Committee of the of the federation of the trade union federations and uh, in each one of the industries and then we have one comrade in in the national council of the cgil trade union which is the confederation Uh, and this means that in some factories, when there was the wave of strikes at the beginning of the lockdown, it was our comrades and our shop stewards that played a key role. And this was the case, for instance, at the, at the Fiat Pomigliano plant. And at the Alfa Romeo factory, amongst others. The Italian comrades uh, organized a national appeal under the name of the workers and not cannon fodder. Developing the a program of demands for this movement against the uh, in response to the to the pandemic. And, and this appeal initiated by our comrades was signed by hundreds of shop stewards and trade union activists in the most important workplaces across the country. And uh, as, as a continuation of this appeal, the comrades organized a national online meeting of trade union activists. with the participation of 200 uh, people from all over the country and from all different sectors of industry. And this, you could say that this was the, the, the largest uh, trade union work, work activist meeting to take place in the lockdown. This kind of work shows that under certain conditions, a small group with the correct ideas, having done the necessary pre preparatory work over a period of time, can have an impact which is much larger than its numbers. The largest section of the IMT is in Pakistan. And it's called the uh, Lal Salam, the Red Salute. And this is an organization which is spread across the whole uh, country. With presence in all the different regions and amongst all the, the many different national uh, groups in Pakistan. Uh, 
about a month ago they held a national uh, conference uh, which had to be held online but in some areas the congress were able to 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 gather locally to participate in the congress And they had a, a total of 420 registered delegates. They, they also had international visitors participating in the Congress from the region. From Afghanistan, from Nepal and from Bangladesh. as well as from India. Uh, the comrades are conducting regular and systematic trade union work through the Red Workers uh, Front. And they have a presence in, the, in many different uh, uh, industries. in textile, energy, in the private sector, in multinational companies like Coca-Cola, Unilever, in the, in the public sector, amongst transport workers, amongst doctors, And they also conduct very widespread youth work through the Progressive Youth Alliance. In the last one year, the section has grown by 42%. Uh, the Russian section of the IMT is called the Marxist tendency. The Marxist tendency. Uh, and this, uh, the, the, the organization in Russia uh, took a, a very important uh, step forward last year. when there was a fusion, a fusion Congress between, between the Russian section of the IMT and the Revolutionary Workers' Party. This was the result of a period of political uh, discussion. And it means that now we have an organization which is, which is spread throughout uh, this uh, huge country. All the, all the way from Brest-Litovsk in Belarus. To Vladivostok in the Far East. In, in the border with China and North Korea. As you've, as you've seen from, from these few examples that I've given, we, we are experiencing a general growth of the organization. The membership figures from all sections and groups reveal an unprecedented growth of the IMT, an acceleration of growth over the past six months. And, and in reality, most of this growth has taken place since March, really since the beginning of the, of the pandemic and the shock that this has, has meant.
Compared with one year ago, the membership of the IMT has grown by 27% overall. But the growth has been particularly intense in the last three months. With a growth of 13% since April, between April and the 1st of July. Now, the IMT, as you have seen in this school, is based firmly on revolutionary Marxist ideas. Currently, there is a growing questioning of the capitalist system everywhere. And many, particularly amongst the youth, are turning towards socialist and communist ideas. And since, and since we have done the preparatory work of training and educating cadres, we, we are now, the IMT is in a unique position to grow amongst these layers. But, but this is not an automatic thing. This growth of the IMT is taking place when many other organizations are in crisis. Have disbanded themselves or have suffered massive splits. And I will say the, 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 the difference, what makes the, the IMT different from all of this, is, is our emphasis on Marxist theory and our comradely non-sectarian approach to the workers' movement. As part, as part of this, the, the emphasis on Marxist theory, we, we, we do claim the heritage of the, of the Russian revolutionary Leon Trotsky. And, and uh, as Rob has explained, on August the 20th, it will be the 80th anniversary of his assassination. His assassination in, in Mexico by a Stalinist uh, agent. And we want to mark this 80th uh, anniversary with, with an online, international online rally. You are all, you are all invited. We will put the, the details on the screen at some point. We will have the presence of Esteban uh, Volkov. Who's, who's Trotsky's grandson. And who has dedicated his whole life to defending and preserving the legacy of Trotsky. On this basis, what I have already explained, and in the revolutionary events which have already opened up,
we are certain that we will build the international Marxist tendency. Our forces are still modest. But, but I will say it's it's already a very important beginning. Gathered around the IMT as members of the IMT. We have already a few thousand. A few thousand. Of the best of the best working class and youth activists across the world. And many others will join us and take their place. Our, our aim, the aim of the organization, is to take the ideas of Marxism to the working class so that we can build a revolutionary leadership which is up to the tasks ahead. Comrades, we will make sure that this time our class wins. And that we put an end to this rotten, crisis-ridden capitalist system. Long live the IMT, workers of the world unite. Thank you. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Jorge for that. It was a, an excellent introduction to this subject. The report shows uh, not just a quantitative, but a qualitative uh, development on all fronts of the IMT. Uh, but before I, I call in uh, uh, some comrades to give their own reports. I'd like to make a couple of announcements. First of all, it, it's a, a reminder, it has been announced, of the uh, abduction of Comrade Amin in uh, Karachi. And... Um, I urge all uh, comrades, all friends to uh, go to marxist.com and get all the details there. So we can uh, combat this injustice and secure his release. So I urge everybody to, to do that with the, with the utmost urgency. Because you shouldn't be in, in custody one, one day longer, one hour longer. The other point I want to raise is that uh, the appeal for uh, extra contributions, financial contributions, has uh, been taken up. And I'm, I'm pleased to announce that uh, in the first half an hour of uh, this session, 3,000 euros were collected in addition to what we've got. And that shows a, a great sacrifice from uh, comrades. It's a wonderful contribution.
But uh, of course, there's still time for you to contribute more. You know, if there's comrades who haven't given or like to give some extra, then please do so. Now, the, the, the first comrade uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce to you. is uh, Comrade uh, Paras Jan from Pakistan. So the floor is yours, Samir. Thank you so much, Rob, for your kind words. Uh, first of all, I congratulate all the participants for the success of this incredible uh, school. it will definitely change and further accelerate the momentum of the of our growth you already named all the countries from where we uh, have participation in this school I specifically want to mention one country, India. Where we don't have our uh, regular section. More than 350 comrades were registered for this school from India. It is huge success, no doubt. From Pakistan, we have uh, registration from the uh, double of our uh, membership roundabout. Recently in Pakistan, we established our new branch in the beautiful mountain area uh, on the border of China. We didn't have our uh, branch uh, uh, in the past. And now we are present everywhere, in every region, in every nationality of Pakistan. It shows the increasing interest uh, in the whole region for the uh, understanding of Marxist ideas and for the struggle to overthrow this uh, rotten capital system. And it also shows the uh, uh, enormous potential uh, for growth in future, and it uh, represents the significant change in the objective situation. Global recession of capitalism has sharpened and uh, accelerated the crisis of Pakistani regime. Life had never been easy for the major, uh, vast majority of people in this country, but now literally it has turned a living hell for the poor people of Pakistan. On the other hand, for the handful of uh, capitalists, landlords, military and civil bureaucrats, it, this country is not less than a heaven uh, full of luxuries of all life, all luxuries of life. Because of the uh, ineffectiveness and the disintegration of the so-called uh, democratic structure, there is no check and balance on the loot and plunder of this, these parasites in Pakistan.
recently this corrupt and rotten ruling class of pakistan made huge sum from the corona crisis even they received aid of billions and uh, uh, to fight uh, covid 19 and uh, all the money went to the bank accounts of uh, these uh, ruling class persons Five minutes gone. No relief given to the uh, masses. People are uh, burning in the fire of unemployment, uh, inflation, especially food inflation, price hikes. transparency international recently reported a huge and unprecedented increase in the corruption uh, in the recent period ironically the current uh, ironically the current, the current government came into power uh, on the uh, program of uh, uh, accountability and a, a program of uh, uh, elimination of corruption the euphoria of so called right wing populism is ended now this government is in fact running not on it's on power but on the weakness of the opposition parties all the state institutions and all the mainstream parties are uh, bankrupted and uh, people have no confidence and no hope and no leon in them and all the social and political indicators suggest that we are inching towards the revolutionary situation in pakistan but the tragedy is that we are not we are still too small to be uh, the reference point for the large layers of the masses this is the most critical phase of the building of revolutionary party in, in pakistan keeping a sense of proportion we are trying hard to uh, intervene in each and every uh, protest mobilization movement from south to north of the uh, country red workers front is trying to combine all the separated movements on the one platform uh, to make a movement against privatization and all economic uh, warfare uh, imposed by the ruling class railway workers for the uh, very uh, after a long time protesting and they uh, are going on strike uh, on the 5th of august we are collecting uh, solidarity for uh, railway workers and yesterday we organized a uh, 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 solidarity meeting in which uh, professors and lecturers young doctors and Uh, telecommunication workers and different sector workers of different sectors were gathered and they uh, manifest their solidarity for the uh, railway workers strike upcoming strike
in balochistan we are already part of the workers alliance of uh, more than 30 active trade unions 10 minutes gone five to go universities and colleges are closed due to corona crisis nowadays but we are organizing our study circles online we recently launched an online tv that is named mazdoor tv and we already has uh, gathered very huge response uh, and we organized uh, and we telecasted many programs about women issues and work position on that uh, online tv channel we are we are uh, we are facing state repression of different types continuously for the last 3 to 4 years when we intervened in the pashtun movement uh, with clear marxist perspective seven of our comrades were abducted in karachi after a marvelous international solidarity campaign uh, they were released uh, within uh, a week but since then the state uh, continued to uh, create logistic problems for us we were uh, refused hall for our uh, congress meetings uh, and uh, we were refused in several cities press clubs and uh, arts council halls and uh, other uh, 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 official buildings for our meetings uh, in some cities our offices were closed like karachi we couldn't able to reopen our office for last 3 years for uh, two uh, sorry 3 years yes we had to organize our central committee meetings also secretly two minutes left it was a continuous intimidation and harassment going on uh, for our organization now now once again they uh, abducted one of our comrades he is 26 year old uh, young man joined imt 2 years ago he is from poor background and because of his economic stress he was not uh, continuously actively participating in all the events uh, organized by our organization but he is very committed and very enthusiastic about revolutionary ideas and about practically overthrowing this rotten capitalist system in the past he had been uh, working for a mainstream reactionary nationalist local party of karachi but then he realized that all the leaders of that party are corrupt and tools of oppression and he himself contacted contacted us along with 
his uh, sister and they joined IMT. Please sum up. I had long discussions with him, never saw any negative or criminal tendency in him. Even then in our campaign, we are demanding that if there are some allegation against him, he must be produced before courts, the court. But it, it, but it is third week uh, started now and we have no clue of his whereabouts. And now they, and now they even started harassing our uh, the sister of that comrade, the Saira Bano, who is a elected member of our regional committee in Karachi. We strongly believe that with the uh, help of international, with the, uh, the inter international solidarity and protest campaign, we will. Uh, very soon uh, get back our comrade alive. Please sum up. Four years back, there was the rebirth of Pakistani section of IMT. We had lost most of the quantity in the split. We were left a handful of comrades. No offices, no logistics. No money. No money. But we had the most valuable and the most powerful thing on this earth, on this planet. The ideas, the ideas of uh, scientific Marxism, revolutionary Marxism, not the new, not the so-called new Marxism, the old ideas of Marxism of 19th century. We have. We had the, the, the uh, magnificent strength of this uh, being part of this international IMT. Please sum up for us. And, uh, and uh, we have built on the ideas of this international very strong base uh, in Pakistan the last four years. And we are resolute to build in future a very strong mass-based revolutionary party on these ideas and to revive the golden days of Comintern in our generation in the whole, on the whole planet. Long live socialist revolution. Long live IMT. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, Paris. That was uh, excellent. I mean, the work of the Pakistan comrades is an inspiration to us all. And we will mobilize the maximum solidarity with that comrade and with the section. Thank you. The next comrade I'd like to introduce is a pleasure, is from Brazil. Comrade uh, Lucy Diaz. Lucy. Okay. Hi, comrades. Uh, my name is Lucy. 
and I'm responsible for our youth work in the Brazilian section. So first, uh, the capitalist crisis is international and hits Brazil. Like, like in other countries, this crisis is uh, also has been intensified by the pandemic. Now we have almost 90,000 deaths and just if you count the offic official cases. The number of confirmed cases it's almost 2 million and 500,000 people. And despite of that, Bolsonaro says things like, this is just a little flu. Or how can I decrease the deaths, showing a complete contempt for the working class lives? In this situation, the workers uh, angry is growing and it, it is expressed by the government's rejection. Now, just 30% support him. So we have saw in Brazil different kinds of demonstrations against him. From the people hitting pots on the windows, till street demonstrations in early June that we attended. Our section in, in Brazil was the first organization to put out the slogan Bolsonaro, uh, Bolsonaro out in March last year. And until now, we are the only organization to really organize the fight back against Bolsonaro's government. with the uh, action committees for Bolsonaro out, or for Bolsonaro. <laughs> All the other organizations led by the most important parties uh, in Brazil. The Workers' Party and the Communist Party were struggling against our slogan since the beginning. Despite of that, our slogan was taken by the mass movements and this organization, uh, these organizations had to knee in front of that. Now they say for a Bolsonaro, but they are not really organizing the workers to defeat him and his government. They are signing manifestos to re, uh, reconcile, reconcile the workers' movement and the bourgeoisie. Standing for the law, democracy, state, and the market to the ru uh, ruling class, the bourgeoisie. We keep on organizing and um, we keep on going organizing workers and students in these uh, actions committees. Now we have a, now we have uh, 31 of them with almost 500 people meeting online. Uh, 
we did a successful national youth meeting in, in the end of May with 242 attending. Five minutes gone. And now we have the goal to have 1,000 subscribers in our manifesto for, for Bolsonaro to, uh, till se September. And now we are preparing uh, 10 regional meetings, uh, meetings like this to boost the youth work in the five regions of the country. It is important to say that we are also concerned to the revolutionary education of our comrades and contacts. Because we know that only with the correct ideas, we can defeat Bolsonaro and capitalist society as we have been learning on this amazing university. So we have national activities to discuss theory and tactics for, for example. Uh, we had a discussion about the United Front with 180 people attending. A seminary for the public education free and for all with uh, 333 attending. A discussion about world world perspectives with 303 and three attending. <laughs> And finally, a great result in attendance for this international Marxist university. More than uh, 600 Brazilians are here. Our uh, agenda will keep on going to October and the next ev event will happen in uh, is on 8th uh, of October. August. And we keep on boost the campaign in defense of the life of um, uh, Professor Amara. So uh, since the beginning of the pandemic, we grow uh, 30 3% and since the beginning of this year we grow uh, 35%. Of course with newcomers we are also concerned with their education. So we have changed the basic education with uh, which has now 12 points. Like class struggle and Marxism, the capitalist mode of production, Bolshevism and Stalinism and so on. And we are also preparing the cadres for prepare new leaders. For the new branches we will have soon to be uh, have to build. So we have now monthly discussions in the central committee. And we have recruited new member states. 
Um, now talking about our newspaper. It keeps doing the pandemic in virtual version. With new issues each second week, and we started a campaign for new signatures in early July. Our website also has access uh, records, more than 76,000 in June uh, accessed. Ten minutes gone. And more than 70,000 uh, in July. Okay, before the pandemic, we, we had around uh, eight, 80, um, 800 um, views each day in our website. And now we have uh, on average uh, 2,606 of um, 53, I, I don't remember how to say in July, <laughs> uh, each day. Yeah, um, so uh, we launched uh, new initiatives uh, on social media. like podcasts and Sunday uh, lives on YouTube channel and Facebook. We now have uh, 14 podcast episodes and about 300 listeners on average. And our active, uh, activities on YouTube have been watched by over 3,000 people on average um, in each ep episode. We had uh, a record in the Sears collection and our theor theoretical magazine Socialist America was a sales success. All these show uh, to us that it's possible to build a revolutionary organization. Two minutes left. And that is for wars and revolutionary moments that the Marxists are made for. And we will keep on fight for a revolutionary international for the working class. moving forward in the building of our section in Brazil. Confidence in our Marxist ideas, confidence in the working class power and confidence in ourselves. Long life to MT comrades. Thank you, Lucy. That was a, a great report. Solidarity with the comrades in Brazil. And uh, now I'd like to call on uh, Fiona Lally to present the report from Britain. Fiona. Thank you. Um, so I'm pleased to say that the Marxists in Britain are doing very well. We have seen significant growth in the last period.
as people are drawing radical conclusions from the defeat of Corbyn in the general election in December? We've also had the election of the Blairite Keir Starmer as Labour leader. And on top of this, the general impact of the pandemic and the Tory government's handling of it. But we now have groups of supporters in over 50 towns and cities across the country. who organize regular political discussion and coordinate our work. Taking Marxist ideas into the labor and youth movements. One of our biggest strengths is our large and expanding base in the student field. We are probably the biggest and best known left group among students in the UK. We organize among students under the banner of the Marxist Student Federation. which has Marxist societies on 38 campuses across the country. All these societies run weekly or fortnightly meetings. And reading groups discussing Marxist theory, history and current events. And over the last couple of months during lockdown, hundreds of university students have attended weekly national meetings online. Where we've discussed revolutionary theory and history. This foothold that we have in the universities is based on a serious approach to Marxist theory. And it's on this basis that we plan to go on the offensive against the ideas of postmodernism, which, in, which infect all UK universities. And this Marxist university marks the beginning of this campaign for us. We also plan to build on the links we have built with the organized labor movement through the Marxist Student Federation. Last year, we helped organize student staff solidarity during a strike of university lecturers. And in some places such as Cambridge, we played a leading role in university occupations in support of the union's demands. We also ran a campaign during the general election to get students organized. Five minutes gone. In the fight for a socialist labor government, in many cases, we linked up with local labor student groups as well.
We have built points of support in this way, which we can now develop. And we're also now beginning to use the strength of the Marxist Student Federation to organize among school students. Who are some of the most radicalized layer of youth. And we're planning to hold regular online meetings from September onwards to discuss these ideas. Most recently, we have been involved in the Black Lives Matter protests. In over a dozen cities. In places such as Norwich, we played a leading role organizing the local demonstrations. And in Bristol and Northeast London, we have been a driving force in coordinating um, coordinating local groups of anti-racist youth for political discussion and organization. We intend to strengthen our work in this movement in the future. We are now in a position to make some serious gains in our industrial work. Last year, we ran a big campaign in the Labour Party. To reinstate Clause 4 into the Labour Party constitution. Which was the party's original commitment to socialism. And in the course of this campaign, we won the support of the Postal Workers Union. The Bakers and Food Workers Union. And the General Secretary of the Civil Servants Union. we will now be able to build on this position. And that campaign won 62% of the votes from delegates at the Labour Party constitution. And forced the Labour Party's National Executive Committee to agree to scrap Tony Blair's right wing clause for. In favor of a new one. This campaign showed the growing authority we are building in the labor movement. And we have plans to turn our paper, which is currently fortnightly, into a weekly publication by the end of next year. 10 minutes gone. This will be an enormous step forward for us. but one which is absolutely necessary to keep up with the pace of events.
and continue to provide the best Marxist analysis in the country. Our comrades in Scotland, who produce a paper called Revolution, have also made great progress and are planning a significant expansion of their resources within the next month or two. In Britain, we remain a relatively small force compared to the task we set ourselves. It has taken us a long time to get to this position. But now we are beginning to see what we will be capable of in the coming period. We are building on the unshakable foundation of Marxist theory. And our confidence in those ideas gives us the confidence that we will be able to build. And organize ourselves sufficiently to be able to change the world. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Very positive uh, news from Britain. And uh, also some positive news on the financial front, I'd like to report. In the first half an hour, we had raised uh, 3,000 euros. But up, up the, to this moment, it's gone up to 5,000 euros. So that's, uh, that's, that's fantastic news. And again, it shows the commerce want to donate and uh, those who are not at, had time to donate, they can do so online, it'd be great. But, uh, but now we're gonna take a, a short break and we're gonna come back in, um, how many minutes time? Well, it's uh, 10, 10, to, uh, 10 to eight. That's what, 15 minutes, if I may, if my mistake, if my calculations are right. Okay, so we'll see you then.
Well, comrades, uh, welcome back. And we can resume the, the discussion. And I have a very great pleasure in introducing the next speaker. Comrade uh, Oleg from Russia. Thank you very, very much, uh, Rope. Uh, and uh, also, I wanted to, to make uh, to give thanks uh, to all the comrades from the international and the international center for warm words for Alexei Pet Petrov. Uh, as a, as a founder of our section, as one of the founders of our section, he is a, a, a very important uh, comrade and a friend for us. And uh, I think uh, he too very appreciates uh, this from the part of the whole of, of the whole members of the international. Also, I wanted to give a big thanks to all the gr groups of the comrades who were benevolently translating this ses uh, these sessions and made uh, it possible to reach uh, for the most wide international audience. So without any further ado, I want to move to the question of Russia and the question of the revolutionary perspectives of, for Russia in the context of for the perspectives for world revolution. First of all, I want to say uh, building a revolutionary Marxist organization in Russia has its obvious significance and at the same time it has its uh, obvious complex difficulty. The, uh, the importance of Russia for the uh, future process of the world revolution is contained within a number of factors. Here we have uh, the fact that uh, today Russia is one of the biggest uh, militaristic powers in the world. That it, uh, that it still contains uh, a very vast amount of industrial potential. that Russian capitalism is the biggest provider of uh, the energy resources for the biggest European capitalists. And of course, and of course a geographical factor, uh, which uh, stands uh, in the fact that Russia is standing on the border between the Europe and Asia. And uh, in Russia, we have uh, uh, a, a cross lines between the different uh, uh, groups of the world proletariat uh, uh, in uh, in a in direct uh, in a direct manner. Also, I think uh, concerning Russia, there is. Uh, still one very important problem that still exists. Many, not only anti-communist uh, communist, uh, propaganda, propagandists, but uh, also many on the left, are still trying to depict uh, Russia as uh, is, is in some way, you know, a 
kind of of a, of a left wing uh, state or anti imperialist state or a, a some uh, may call it a quasi Soviet state, but it, it is completely false. And I think that is also one uh, problematic aspect concerning Russia. On the other hand, when we talk about the difficulties of building a revolutionary Marxist organization in Russia, when we have uh, to take into consideration that the years of the Stalinism and the the, uh, the violence and the breakdown of the workers' movement after the 1991, uh, 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 after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, have created uh, the conditions within uh, which uh, uh, almost all the the workers' organizations have degenerated, including the political organizations of the workers. A vast amount of uh, practical and theoretical traditions of the workers' movement and the Marxist movement was uh, basically lost. And today, uh, in, I may say, we have to restore those traditions and practices almost from the scrap. Five minutes gone. Also, concerning the uh, uh, historical specifics of Russia, Uh, the Stalinist moods uh, after the collapse of the Soviet Union and uh, for, uh, for, uh, for many decades after that still had their, uh, their significant influence within the society. And uh, in many times uh, they were mixed with the, with the bourgeois and petty bourgeois nationalism. And uh, uh, this kind of tendencies, I think, uh, is, uh, is those that we must uh, decisively fight. The parties uh, that uh, were, you know, the remainings of the old uh, uh, Communist Party of the Soviet Union, which was strong uh, just a few decades ago. Uh, right now, completely going away from the historic scene. Right now, the very basis of the left-wing movement in Russia is formed by the people who were never a member, a members of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union and have never experienced living in the USSR. But still for us as a small group within the combination of uh, those uh, complex issues, Uh, conquering a significant uh, political influence is still uh, in not an easy task. But, but still we were, uh, we were able to achieve uh, uh, some successes that I can uh, call uh, pretty good successes.
within the year of, uh, of the unity conference of uh, the part of RWP with the, the Russian section of the IMT, we executed a big work on uh, reorganizers or on reorganizing uh, our methods of uh, work uh, in our organization propaganda and so on to be precise within uh, this period first of all we've created a, a systematic uh, and uh, programmed uh, lectures on the question of the history of Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik party and the Marxist theory. We've, uh, we've organized a systematic work within the student organizations uh, as far as we can reach those. We've rebuilt our YouTube channel, which is now, uh, which uh, have within, uh, I think, uh, half a year reached a number of uh, uh, 824 subscribers. And I think within this year, it will reach 1,000 subscribers. And uh, this was due to the more pro professionalized and qu quality approach uh, to it. And I think uh, it's, uh, it's a good indication that uh, our, uh, also our media influences are also gradually growing. And uh, also within this year, of course, uh, we had uh, some uh, fluctuations uh, within uh, uh, the numbers of the membership. Uh, because, uh, uh, well, there is, there was uh, a pro also a problematic aspect to the, uh, to, to the unification of the organizations. 10 minutes gone. Because as former part of, uh, of the Revolutionary Party, uh, which was led by Sergei Bietz in, in past, we had some, uh, we had some uh, problematic, uh, problematic uh, heritage to say. I recall once Alan uh, compared uh, Sergei to, you know, the late 19th century uh, Bakunist leader, anarchist leader. And uh, I think it's a pretty just uh, comparison, so you can imagine uh, what the problems were there. Right now we have a much more strict discipline, a much improved manner of work, and I think that creates a basis for us, although we are still a small and relatively weak group, it creates a basis for building an embryo for a future mass workers revolutionary organization. Which will be, which will be able to revive the best traditions of the uh, the best revolutionary traditions of the of the Russian working class. And it's important to build this kind of organization right now.
because uh, uh, the latest years uh, are showing more and more the bankruptcy of the existing regime, regime in Russia. Two minutes left. Because the growing uh, uh, strike uh, wave uh, shows the economic part of this bankruptcy and uh, the recent uh, political process, uh, they show the political side of this bankruptcy. Although many sectarians uh, are ignoring this and can see how the, the, the conditions for revolutionary situation are brewing here, but I have no time to go deep into that. Anyway, uh, also I want to say that uh, within the, uh, the field of, uh, of the work uh, among uh, the striking organizations and the workers directly, we were able to achieve uh, some significant goals. We were uh, very active within the strike committee of the recent uh, delivery workers strike. We were able uh, to find a contact on the uh, main plant in uh, in Norilsk city, with, uh, which is uh, a city with one uh, big plant that uh, uh, creates the whole economy of the city. And so on and so on. Uh, and also, as uh, comrades already said, uh, uh, the crisis of capitalism also means uh, the crisis of reformism. And I must say that uh, this also implies for a post-Stalinist parties, in our case, uh, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. Please sum up soon. Although uh, in the coming elections, one of our comrades uh, will be uh, nominating uh, from the part of the Communist Party one of, in one of the regions, still I have to say that uh, there are obvious signs that there is a crisis or a purge uh, brewing within the, uh, the Communist Party of the Russian Federation. But uh, sadly, I don't have uh, time to go into details on that. I just, before I, uh, I finish, I just uh, want to say that right now it is uh, a perfect time and the good conditions for building up a genuine uh, Marxist revolutionary organization in Russia. Although uh, there are some forces that uh, still try to provide uh, and, uh, and uh, provide uh, uh, ref reformist uh, politics uh, for the working class and try to still convince the working class uh, to believe in the Putin's regime. And for those, uh, I want uh, to answer with the, the great uh, lines of, of the great communist uh, po uh, poet, uh, uh, from Germany, Bertolt Brecht. In advance, I want uh, to uh, beg pardon uh, from the part of, uh, of the German and Austrian comrades uh, for my awful uh, uh, German pronunciation. He wrote the following. Ich habe ich jemals gemeinsam mit der Sache des Klassenfeinds, das Wort nicht gefunden, das uns beide jemals äh, verheilt. Das Regen fliegt von oben nach unten und du bist mein Klassenfeind, which in uh, roughly in English is translated as uh, uh, I have no deal with in no common interest uh, with, the, with my class enemies, 
there are no words that can find a, a common ground, ground for us. As long as, uh, as a rain fall da from, falls down from the sky, you are my class enemies, uh, enemy. And that's what I can answer to all the reformists in this uh, period. Please sum up. And I want just to finish uh, with the, the simple idea. Today, the international Marxist tendency is uh, the one international organization that has all the characteristics and uh, abilities to become a worldwide revolutionary workers' party. And I'm very glad to be a part of it. And I want to say only two things. Workers of the world unite. Long live the international Marxist tendency. Red salute. Well, thank you, uh, Oleg, for that uh, marvelous report. Wonderful news from Russia. And uh, we look forward to the, uh, with interest and with pride in the development of the Russian section. Well done, excellent. Uh, before I call the next comrade, I just want to point out as well that um, the financial uh, uh, input is, is growing by the minute. From 5,000 euros, we now shot up to 6,700 euros. Excellent again, brilliant. So, you know, keep it up, comrades, keep it up. We haven't got long to go. But uh, the next comrade I'd like to call again, uh, great pleasure, um, comrade um, Alessio. Marconi from Italy, from the very uh, important section, or most important section, I would say, in, in, in Europe. Please give you a report. Thank you. Well, one of the most important sections in Europe. Uh, well, <laughs> red greetings uh, to, to everyone from, uh, from the Italian section. As, as you know, Italy was among the first countries to be affected by the pandemic. And this resulted in an unprecedented change in the workers' consciousness. The bosses and the government uh, have kept open the activities where there was the virus allowing the, the spread of the infection. And the only force that opposed it was the workers with the spontaneous strikes of March. We are not talking about uh, union leaders uh, who did, did uh, nothing at all. But of people who in many cases were uh, not even politically active. Look, what, what happened was explained, uh, for example, by, by a worker who contacted uh, the organization uh, in March. And uh, he was from the an industrial uh, uh, area 
in the northern part of Italy. And he told, when they called me back to work, my whole world fell apart. And, and, and that was repeated a thousand and thousand of times. Our organization in Italy does not yet have the dimension to, to direct these struggles. But we found ourselves in the midst of these strikes in contact with the, a new vanguard that is uh, forming among the workers. We promoted the, the appeal, uh, workers are not uh, cannon fodder, as Jorge said. Call in uh, for this online uh, meeting with the participation of uh, 200 workers. And after this assembly, we held uh, commissions uh, of uh, workers uh, from uh, different sectors. Like uh, health, uh, public education, trade and uh, distribution, transport. We analyzed the situation and put forward the program emphasizing the need for workers' control to defend workers' health. In early July, we held uh, our National Workers' Conference. attended physically by around 100 uh, workers. And that was uh, uh, the first face-to-face -face meeting after the lockdown. We approved a document that had been discussed and voted in 19 different local conferences. by 225 workers. And we launched a left-wing trade union tendency within the main Italian union. This assembly was broadcasted on Facebook and uh, collected uh, around 4,000 views. Uh, the comrades uh, intervened on, for example, on the spontaneous strike at the Pomigliano Fiat factory. At one, one of the factories where we played a role in promoting the strikes. Kamran spoke uh, on the battle for health security measures uh, for supermarkets worker. Or on uh, how, for example, in UPS delivery company, Uh, em embryonic discussion on uh, worker controls, uh, control on distribution started uh, during the pandemic.
uh, an intensive care uh, nurse uh, from uh, Milan. Explain how in the midst of the pandemic, uh, health workers received the confused and often contradictory directives. They had to use all their determination to solve day by day the problems caused by the emergency and by decades of cuts. A comrade, uh, a comrade uh, uh, spoke about uh, a, a woman worker who for the first time gave up the break to breastfeed the, babe, the baby for a, a union meeting at the factory. I can't mention them all, but this gives you an, an idea of the deep feeling in the Italian working class. And the IMT in Italy has in its rank and file a selection of the best elements of the working class. Eight it minutes was, gone, Alessio, sorry. It was really a discussion that filled with pride all the comrades who could hear it. In, uh, um, in, in general, the organization reacted promptly to the new situation. Uh, we moved to online activity, reaching a record participation for presences in our meetings. We developed a huge effort to spread ideas online. with videos published regularly on YouTube and social networks. We published, I think, 55 videos in four months. Especially on Marxist theory, uh, but also war crisis, a political situation, uh, and even the, the campaigns developed by the organization. Uh, the, the access data to the website and social network uh, uh, skyrocketed in the months of the lockdown. Our main uh, website uh, uh, passed from uh, um, 13,000 visits uh, in February to uh, 40, 45,000 uh, in March and April. 10 minutes gone. And uh, uh, this is true also for the social social networks. We organize uh, a very successfully online uh, uh, assembly on the movement in the US. Uh, with a live uh, uh, connection with comrade Erica from Minneapolis. Uh, and more generally, we held weekly Marxist uh, study groups group uh, online. Uh, 
with a leadoff and an open debate. And um, we estimate that around uh, 500 people in total attended at least one of these meetings. Many young people, but also many of the workers I told you before. This shows uh, uh, the relevance, uh, of course, of Marxism, uh, but also the, the, the research uh, for ideas today and ideas to change society. And for this reason, we also launched a, a new online bookstore. Now, in recent, uh, in, the, in the last uh, months, uh, schools uh, have been closed. With online teaching uh, that uh, denied the, the right to education to thousands and thousands of students. Two minutes left. Um, we uh, developed a campaign uh, and had uh, an, a national uh, student meeting. You see, public education system is in total confusion now. They, they really don't know how to open schools in September. So there will be an explosive situation and we are ready to take action in it. And, and we already uh, came into contact with these uh, young people in demonstration in solidarity with the Black Lives Matters movement. That was the first serious uh, mobilization after the lockdown. All this provoked a consistent increase in the authority of the section. But also in our periphery and in militants. Militancy has grown by 10% from April uh, uh, to, to now. We have 25 uh, local sections. And we are present with groups uh, or comrades uh, in 15 of the 20 biggest cities in Italy. We just created uh, two new online uh, uh, regional uh, branches. in Tuscany and Veneto, that are the areas of uh, Florence and Venice. Please sum up, Alessio. And uh, um, all, all, all that was possible for the patient uh, work of construction, renewal, uh, training of new cadres that we carried out for years. And thanks to this, today we are in the best position to take advantage of the new situation. I will end uh, telling you this. In the last meeting uh, of the online group in Tuscany, uh, two, two, uh, two young comrades uh, uh, intervening saying more or less the same thing. I was, I was going politically active 
in some way. Looking around. But when I started attending IMT meetings, I was enlightened by these ideas. They are high school students. These words not only fill us with confidence, this tell us that there are thousands and thousands of young people who are looking for these ideas. And probably many attending this marvelous uh, Marxist university. Our task is Please to make up. them find these ideas and with them build an organization that at a certain point can play a role in the events of the future. Thank you. Thank you, Alessio. That was, uh, that was a, a great report. Shows the comrades are doing, uh, you know, systematic and solid work in the working class and the youth. Which is obviously the, the recipe for success. Now, before I call on the next uh, comrades, I want to make a, a little an announcement. That following the school, there's going to be some um, online meetings taking place in different uh, countries. Uh, in particular, I've got two, two here from Switzerland and Canada who are going to hold meetings for both members and those who are interested in finding out about the IMT. And the, and the links to these events can be found in the information menu and in the chats. There's also information about uh, meetings in, in Brazil and in Mexico. And I understand you have to re reload the reload the page if you want to see this information. Now then, uh, the money side, it's it's going up again. It's uh, seven thousand five hundred euros. So, you know, uh, if we keep this up, you'll you'll get to ten thousand, no problem. Anyway, see what we can do. Anyway, the next uh, uh, comrade I'd like to introduce is from the, what they call the belly of the beast. Of the United States of America, and it's uh, Laura Brown. Welcome, Laura. The floor is yours. Thanks so much, comrade. There's never been a better time for revolutionary socialists in the US. Jorge gave some numbers which highlight that we've experienced very rapid growth. And that we've increased our influence in the last period. Since the start of the pandemic in mid-March, Over 600 people reached out to us uh, asking to join through our websites. The volume of sales for our bookstore, marxistbooks.com has tripled.
And our Socialist Revolution website audience has also tripled compared to last year. We have comrades in 60 different cities and towns meaning that one third of the US population lives in an area with an active IMT presence. We have established branches, student clubs and public reading groups. in cities such as New York City, Minneapolis, uh, St. Louis, Pittsburgh, Boston, and so on. But we're also making progress in a lot of new important places. For example, the San Francisco Bay, Phoenix, Arizona, Denver, Colorado, Chicago, Washington, DC, and many more. We now even have a comrade in Alaska. The South uh, is an area of the US that is usually considered to be very conservative. It has the lowest unionization rates in the country. but it's not immune to the crisis of capitalism. On the contrary, it's a region with huge potential for the growth of socialist ideas. And we're establishing branches in important metro areas uh, in that area, such as Atlanta, Georgia, or Raleigh, North Carolina. So we now have the framework of a truly national Marxist organization. Which is overwhelmingly pro proletarian. Uh, it's mostly made up of young workers and uh, student workers. But the work to build this up over the last 20 plus years was not, uh, not easy. We started from a small rural town. At a time when uh, on the mention of socialism, just the word, you'd be shouted down, you'd be uh, told to go back to Russia, to go back to Venezuela. But the situation now has been completely transformed. Socialism, communism, Marxism are all increasingly popular. And it really helps that uh, people like Trump uh, go around saying that wearing masks or social distancing is communist. Or that Black Lives Matter is Marxist. But in any case, there's an immense audience for the ideas of revolutionary socialism. But the only reason that we are now in a position to reach this audience is uh, thanks to that early patient work of building the initial network of Marxist cadre. Five minutes gone. 
We put an emphasis on quality to build a solid foundation. Knowing that quality would eventually turn into quantity. For instance, last year we published a new book called The Revolutionary Philosophy of Marxism. which was discussed collectively by the whole organization. This emphasis on political education wasn't an academic exercise. But rather it prepared the comrades to navigate the social and political turmoil. of the events that we're seeing now, Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump, the coronavirus, Black Lives Matter. This theoretical grounding allowed us to remain flexible in tactics. while uncompromisingly using the Marxist method to analyze the situation as it unfolds. So take our approach to Bernie Sanders, for instance. Many on the left fully endorsed his campaign in the Democratic Party, which is a capitalist party. Others were ultra left. Uh, they denounced him as a bourgeois politician. And they wanted nothing to do with his movement. But we participated in his rallies, which were attended by hundreds of thousands of self-identified socialists. And we use this to provide our own perspective of what socialism is and how it can be achieved. Starting with the need to break from the Democratic Party and fight for a mass socialist party of the working class. This allowed us to become a point of reference for those who had become disillusioned when Bernie dropped out. And so we responded quickly with an article and a video appeal to Sanders supporters. which is one of our most popular articles and videos that we've ever produced. Uh, and then the, the coronavirus pandemic obviously represented uh, another turning point for our work. We published dozens of articles describing the effects of the pandemic in the US. as well as a program of struggle against COVID-19, both in written form and as a video. We also adapted our work to develop our online reach as the other sections did. Starting a, a new podcast and a regular live stream series with thousands of listeners so far. 10 minutes gone.
But the most important development has been the explosion of the Black Lives Matter movement. The section mobilized energetically. For instance, even though we had moved uh, to a digital publication, we quickly produced a new print issue of Socialist Revolution magazine. with the slogan, fight police terror with revolution. Our comrades participated in more than 100 demonstrations across the country. As an example of the mood in the streets, a small handful of comrades in Los Angeles Uh, we're able to hand out nearly 2,000 leaflets uh, in 10 different demonstrations. Marching through Beverly Hills, which is the neighborhood where all the famous rich celebrities live. While chanting, eat the rich. Overall, our comrades handed out thousands of pamphlets and sold hundreds of magazines. Which shows that the movement is looking for a programmatic way forward. And this is precisely what the IMT has to bring to the table. Some of our key demands included the need for democratic neighborhood self-defense committees. The need for organized labor to join the movement and call for a general strike. We pointed out that a majority of the workers already support the movement. Two minutes left. And that only a united working class has the power to bring society to a halt. These points were extremely well received. proving that revolutionary ideas in particular are uh, um, on the order of the day. Now, people used to think that revolution was impossible in the US. But recent events prove that it's actually a concrete perspective for this new epoch. On the basis of events, the consciousness of the masses is leaping ahead of the wildest aspirations of the reformist organizations. Abolish the police has become a mainstream slogan. And Zoomers, uh, Generation Z, are calling for full communism on TikTok. So we must boldly, unapologetically put forward a political and economic program for socialism in our lifetime. Please sum up. And as we continue to build, we'll eventually be in a position to reach millions with such a program.
When that happens, uh, that will be game over for capitalism in the US and worldwide. So let's do it, comrades. Well, uh, thank you, Laura. It was, it was great. And as, and as someone uh, who went to the USA in 1996 to help set up the IMT and, and had no, 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 no response at that time, Things have really moved. Oh, yeah. A couple of years later, we had one comrade, Comrade John, who lived, uh, well, perhaps in an inconvenient place, we say, in Fargo, which is very, very, very far north in the United States. Taking much time now. <clears throat> and with the determination and a bit of courage, I think, and then obviously the correct ideas, we've got the marvelous response we've got today. You know, well done, comments, well done. Well, that brings us to the end of the, the discussion period. So thank everybody for participating. And I, I've got a few announcements before I call uh, Alan to uh, sum up. I earlier uh, announced there was going to be some uh, Zoom meetings after the school. In, in Switzerland, uh, in Canada, Brazil, and Mexico. And now uh, there's a, additional meetings uh, for the Argenti uh, Argentinian comrades. And also a meeting for uh, Central American comrades. Of course, these are, are open to uh, not just IMT members, for those who are interested in the IMT. And the uh, information can be found at, at the, was the information menu and the chat. We have to reload the, the page in order to get this information. So. Again, I'd like to uh, underline the fact we have a, a special meeting taking place on the 20th of August. This is to commemorate the um, 80th uh, anniversary of the assassination of Leon Trotsky. There's a, a Facebook uh, event being created. It's called Trotsky's Ideas Are More Relevant Than Ever, an international rally. And as it says, it's the 20th of August and the time for it is between six, uh, oh, 1600 to 1800. And uh, the speakers at the event will be uh, Alan Woods. And there'll also be a special uh, film showing. And in particular, in, there's gonna be a special message from Esther Van Volkhoff. So please make uh, every effort to attend that particular meeting. It's very important for us and uh, it's a very important uh, occasion. Uh, now then, in relation to the um, finances, I think you've all been waiting for this uh, figure, so have I. Uh,
Now then, let me see there. A very obscure message uh, here. Yeah. It says um, tonight, which is presumed is today. Uh, there has been uh, uh, 233,000 euros donated to the collection. Absolutely amazing. That's total, not tonight. That's to yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm going to be clear. Not tonight, the total, including tonight, yes. And if we add on the uh, uh, the fees as well, donations through the registration, which is a further 45,000 euros, then this will make a total of 278,000 euros. Which seems it's well over a quarter of a million pounds. That's all I know. It's uh, an astounding amount, and uh, it's thanks to the it's thanks to the uh, sacrifice and dedication of you all. So it's a very, very, very big thank you to all those who have uh, donated to the cause of the revolution itself. Of course, this is a PS. We'll have to, uh, it says here, to deduct the costs of, of organising the school. That's quite clear. But nevertheless, it's a, a very considerable amount. Uh, before I introduce Alan, just a, a word also of thanks to all the comrades and friends who shared um, the school and the photos and the pictures and the publicity about the school everywhere because it's been a magnificent event. It's had a far bigger reach than anything we've ever done in the history of the IMT or anything else. So, uh, well, well even, even my son, who's uh, driving a, a truck uh, delivering for the supermarket, uh, is complaining that all his uh, messages on social uh, media are all about the school. Hey. So well done, everybody. It's a uh, fantastic work from a big collection of comrades uh, behind the scenes as well as in the field, as it were. And now I'd like to uh, introduce uh, a comrade that needs no introduction. He's going to sum up the school and uh, sum up where we are generally. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce Alan Woods. Unmute me first, yeah. One second, please. One second. Just a moment. You're on. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Adelante. Comrades. Compañeros. I have spoken at many meetings. He hablado, me he dirigido a muchos meetings. But the, for the first time in my life. Pero por primera vez en mi vida. I feel that I'm speaking to the whole world. Me, tengo la de estar al mundo Over 6,300 people from, from 116 countries. 
más de 6.300 personas de 116 países have participated in this remarkable event. han participado en este extraordinario acontecimiento. Now, comrade Jorge had a very difficult task El compañero Jorge tuvo una tarea muy difícil to explain all the countries concerned. De explicar a todos los, eh, países involucrados. I think he performed his task really admirably. Y creo que le fue hecho una tarea admirable. But if I'm not mistaken, I think he forgot to mention one small but very significant country. I noticed in the collection we had a, a donation, a small but significant uh, donation. From Eritrea in the Horn of Africa. So, greetings to the revolutionary youth of Eritrea. Saludos a la juventud revolucionaria de Eritrea. Comrades, we expect great things of you. Compañeros, esperar, esperamos grandes cosas de vosotros. As we also expect great things from your brothers and sisters in, in the neighboring country of Ethiopia. Como también lo esperamos de vuestros hermanos y hermanas de vuestro país, de, el país vecino de Etiopía. One of the great terrible crimes of imperialism was the way in which they divided the living body of Africa in the same way as they divided the living body of India. The same bloody consequences. For, for too long, the, the, the peoples of Eritrea and Ethiopia have been fighting each other and killing each other. For the sake of a frontier which is a meaningless thing. It is the duty of the socialist revolution. Not only in Africa, but in India and everywhere else. To sweep away all these reactionary barriers. And to unite as a single united revolutionary class. Oh yes, Congress, but we must never forget. The only strength that we possess as a class is our unity. We must never forget this. All the time the bourgeoisie is trying to divide us and turn one against the other. Let us speak with a very clear voice. The international Marxist tendency La stands unconditionally está, eh, de una for the sacred unity of the working class por la de la clase above all distinctions por de, de todas las demás of nationality, nacional, of the color of your skin, color piel, of your religion, religion, your language or your gender. We stand for unity, where the others constantly, constantly try to divide and weaken the working class. Comrades and friends, brothers and sisters of all countries, I'd like to embrace you all and thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart who helped to make this school into a really historic occasion. Which I believe it is. And here we see the real picture of proletarian internationalism at work. What a marvelous mood we saw in all the events of this school. And the mood was summed up brilliantly. 
siguiente, este fue resumido de forma brillante. By this marvelous collection. Con esta maravillosa colecta. Which I have to say surpassed even our most optimistic expectations. Eh, he de decir que ha sobrepasado hasta la más optimista de nuestras uh, predicciones. Come as, for us, this is not just, this is not money, this is not pounds, pounds, shillings and pence, as they used to say in this country. Pero para nosotros, compañeros, esto no es solamente eh, libras, chelines y peniques, como se solía decir en este país. Every euro that is raised here Cada euro que se ha recogido aquí, will be put to good use, se pondrá a, eh, a, en, se invertirá de una buena manera, developing and extending the cause of the proletarian revolution. Desarrollando la causa de la revolución, eh, en el proletarismo. The only cause which is worthwhile. La única causa que merece la pena. Sacrificing and struggling for at this junction in human history. Que merece la pena sacrificarse y luchar en esta fase de la historia. Oh yes, we, we are optimistic, okay. Sí, sí, nosotros somos optimistas. And cheerful. Somos, estamos muy contentos. It seems, sometimes it seems to me we, <coughs> we're the only optimistic and cheerful people in the world. De hecho, algunas veces pienso que, pare que parece que somos la única gente optimista en el mundo. Every other tendency from the bourgeoisie to the reformists, otra desde la a los reformistas, to the left reformists, de los, eh, reformistas de down to the smallest piddling sect. Hasta la más y de las sectas, they all have one, one thing in common. Todas una cosa en común. They are all plunged in the mood of the deepest pessimism. Todos están en un hundidos en, el, en un ambiente de lo más profundo de pesimismo. Oh, what a terrible world we live in. Oh, it's all hopeless. Oh, there's no future, you know. How often have you heard these, these, these hymn tunes? I don't particularly like hymn tunes, except one or two, perhaps from Wales. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I sometimes ask myself why God is such a miserable old bugger. You know? <laughs> why is so miserable? <laughs> Bad tempered. Well, <laughs> for anyone that loves good music as I do. Just, just imagine listening to this terrible rubbish, this horrible, miserable, wailing music for 2,000 years. I think you'd be pretty miserable as well. But seriously, I, I honestly think that if that if uh, if our, when our bourgeois rather when because they do look at the school they they do look at it when the when our bourgeois enemies look at the school. And see our optimism and our above above all our serious attitude to discussing all kinds of what they would consider to be obscure questions. They probably conclude that we are quite mad. <laughs> yes, but they're quite wrong. We're not mad at all. You see, it reminds me of a story by the great Russian uh, Russian uh, 19th century writer uh, Lev Tolstoy. I forget where he wrote this. It must have been one of his short stories. I must, I must, I must look it up. I mean, it's gone. <clears throat> but one day Tolstoy was passing through a Russian village. And he saw a peasant squatting uh, by the side of the road. Squatting down. And uh, waving his arms in, in the air. And at first he thought this man was a lunatic. But when he got closer, he saw that this man was sharpening a knife on a stone. 
fue a un hombre que estaba afilando un cuchillo en una piedra. Come, is that what we've been doing for the last four days? Compañeros, eso es lo que hemos estado haciendo nosotros en los últimos cuatro días. We have been sharpening our weapons in preparation for the class struggle which impends. Hemos estado afilando nuestras armas para la, eh, la, la lucha eh, de clases que, que está por venir. At this moment in time, it is true that our principal weapons are precisely ideas. En este momento preciso, es verdad que nuestras principales ideas son las, perdón, las principales armas son las ideas. Although Marx pointed out in a marvelous phrase, aunque Marx señaló en una maravillosa frase, he said, ideas become a material force when they grip the minds of the masses. Las ideas se convierten en una fuerza material cuando en, en abarcan la, o sea, cuando en, penetran en la mente de las masas. These are our main weapons, and we, we, we neglect these weapons at our peril. I've heard many times from the petty bourgeois critics of Marxism, but one of the things they say is that Marx, the Marxists don't have any morality. What they mean by that is that we certainly reject the hypocritical morality of the bourgeois in the period of its senile decay. We certainly do not require any moral lessons from those people responsible, not system responsible, but terrible inhuman uh, cruelty towards the human race. Nor do we need any lessons on morality or anything else that arises from the senseless and futile word chopping of intellectuals in the university seminar rooms. But but we do have a morality. Oh yes, we have a morality, okay. It is a revolutionary morality. And it's based on a very simple rule. That is moral. Es moral that helps to raise the consciousness of the working class. Lo que ayuda a elevar la conciencia de la clase obrera. That is immoral, evil, and reactionary that lowers it. Y es inmoral, es malo, eh, inmoral, reaccionario, lo que, re, la, lo que la reduce. Esa you, you judge all actions and thoughts and speech purely from that point of view. You won't go far wrong. We have spent the last four, four days discussing fundamental ideas. En los últimos cuatro días nosotros hemos estado discutiendo ideas fundamentales. We've comprehensible, uh, compre comprehensively demolished the false ideas of postmodernism. Y hemos uh, respondido y, y, y demolido uh, de una manera profunda las falsas ideas del postmodernismo. The reactionary ideas of the so-called identity politics. Las Queer theory, so-called, and all the rest of the of the theoretical rubbish that is pumped out every day from the universities. Let us be very clear about this, comrades. Let us call things by their proper name. All these so-called theories are counter-revolutionary ideas, the sole purpose of which is to disorient the workers and youth, to, to divide and split them one against another, and turn them away from the class struggle. Now you see that for that reason, 
These discussions are not of an abstract uh, character for us. And let me uh, spell it out even clearer. We of the IMT cannot, cannot make even the slightest concession. Not one single millimeter of a concession to these false and pernicious ideas, which have unfortunately insinuated themselves into the, the labor movement through the bureaucracy, by the way. And spreads like a poisonous fog that blinds and confuses anybody that's infected by it. Hard words? Oh, yes, they're hard words. Why? For one very simple reason. We are at war. Understand it. We are at war. And this is not a pleasant thing. This is not a walk in the park. This is not a picnic. It's a deadly serious matter. You better understand this. As you can see now with the abduction of Comrade Amin by the forces of the state in Pakistan. That is why we have to have absolute clarity on all theoretical and political questions. That's the prior condition in order to arm the working class and the youth for the serious tasks which, are, which await them. Now, it is, it, it is very important. I think this has been said in the school and I... I Totally agree with this. It is very important that we should always remember who we are and where we come from. Our movement is a great movement. Only for one reason. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Now it's already been said. 80 years ago next month. On the 20th of August 1940. A Stalinist agent Ramon Mercader. Managed to succeeded in penetrating the Trotsky household in Mexico. It was a warm day, but he was wearing a gabardine. The guards were completely hopeless, by the way, they failed in their most elementary duty. To search him for weapons, which he carried, which he carried under his gabardine. He entered Trotsky's study, and the two were left alone again, an act of criminal irresponsibility. Under the under the pretext of giving Trotsky an article which he's supposed to have written for Trotsky to correct. And as Trotsky was bent over the article going through it, Ramon Mercader stood behind him, produced from his gabard, from under his gabardine, an ice pick which he'd shortened the handle. Raised it in the air and smashed it on the skull of the defenseless man. Shattering the brain of the most brilliant uh, Marxist 
of the 20th century together with Lenin. The man who alongside Lenin led the October Revolution. The man who formed and led the, Re the, the Russian Red Army and led it to victory in the Civil War. And above all, in the last 10 years of his life, the man who single-handedly conducted a, a remorseless struggle against Stalin and the Stalinist bureaucracy. And 20 minutes gone. Just imagine it. One man against the entire world. One man standing up to the most monstrous and efficient and ruthless murder machines in, in history. You ever seen in history? Trotsky fought to the end, very bravely fought to the end. Until finally he was, his life was ended by, the, by this treacherous and cowardly attack. In the summer of 1940. And when Stalin heard of this, uh, that his plot had finally succeeded, he must have been very pleased with himself. He imagined that with the murder of Trotsky, all his problems were solved. By the way, he was not mis mistaken one, in one thing, Stalin. He was not wrong on one question. When some of his agents actually complained, they did complain. Why are we spending such enormous sums of money to kill one man? Is it worthwhile? And Stalin said, no, you're wrong. He said, without Trotsky, there is no fourth international. It's finished. Because, he said, they do not have good leaders. And that's a fact. He was not wrong on that. They destroyed the fourth international, as a matter of fact. But I don't wish to dwell on that subject. You see, Stalin was mistaken. In reality, it's not difficult to kill a man or a woman. That's very easy. We human beings are fragile things. Our lives are suspended by a very slender thread that's easily broken. Anyone, anything can kill a man or a woman. A bullet, a knife, an ice pick. Nothing, nothing simpler. But it is impossible to kill an idea whose time has come. And, and that is something that the vulgar empiricist Stalin could never understand. He never understood the whole of his life. He never understood the, the power of ideas. This is the most important thing to grasp. Our, our international is... Uh, in many respects, it's not very strong in many in its apparatus. So we have to rectify that. That's why we need the money. Many, many organizations are more powerful in, in that respect, are stronger than us. 
organizaciones son uh, mucho más fuertes que nosotros en ese aspecto. But in one field, Pero hay un terreno, and it is the most important of all, que es el más importante de todos, the IMT is immeasurably stronger than any other tendency in the world today. Nosotros somos inmensamente, la CNI, somos inmensamente más fuertes que cualquier otra tendencia. En We el have the ideas of Marxism. Nosotros tenemos las ideas del marxismo. And it is the power of ideas that can change the world. Y es el poder de las ideas lo que puede cambiar el mundo. Yeah, Stalin thought everything was solved. Stalin pensó que todo se había resuelto. He was wrong. 25. Eight decades after the death of Leon Trotsky, dear comrades and friends, we are still here. We are still here, still fighting for the ideas of revolutionary Marxism, the ideas of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky, ideas which cannot be murdered by a pickaxe or anything else, the imperishable ideas of Marxism, which are the only guarantee for the future success of the world revolution. Las ideas del marxismo que son la única garantía de éxito para la revolución socialista mundial. I agree completely with what comrade Oleg Bulayev said from Moscow. Estoy de acuerdo con lo que dijo el compañero Oleg Bulayev de Moscú. That the IMT today que la CNI hoy is the only organization on a world scale es la única organización a nivel internacional that has the right to be regarded que tiene el derecho a ser considerada as the genuine inheritor of the international como la única heredera de la internacional that was launched by Leon Trotsky que fue lanzada por Leon Trotsky shortly before he was treacherously struck down by a Stalinist assassin. Poco antes de que fuera eh, asesinado por el, el matón de Stalin. We have to have confidence in ourselves, comrades. Tenemos que tener confianza en nosotros mismos. For one, for one very simple reason. Por una simple razón. Think about it. Pensadlo. Look around you. Look at the other possibilities Mirad that allegedly exist. Alrededor de las posibilidades que existen. And you must come to the following conclusion. Tendremos que llegar a la siguiente conclusión. If we do not do this work, si no this este necessary trabajo, work, este trabajo, nobody else will do it for us. Nadie lo va a hacer por oh yes, today the international Marxist tendency, Hoy, la Marxista and I am not a man given to exaggeration, those that know me, but I'll say this. In this moment in history, en este de la historia, the international Marxist tendency carries on its shoulders la lleva sobre sus hombros, the fate of the world socialist revolution. El de la and that, that means, means something. Y esto algo. It means that each and every one of you Significa que cada uno de nosotros personally bears a colossal responsibility for what happens. Personal, tenemos una gran responsabilidad por lo que ocurre. And at this point, I wish to make an appeal y en este momento me gustaría hacer un llamamiento. for those of you who have not yet taken the step of committing to join a revolutionary organization. A todos vosotros que todavía no hayáis llegado a un compromiso de, de, de uniros, For those of you that listened to the debates for the last four days and are, con and, and are con convinced that what, what, what we're saying is correct, I am asking you right now, right now, not tomorrow or the day after, but right now, to, to make up your mind to make that commitment. Because upon that, uh, many things depend. I am certain that each one of you will gladly accept the responsibility that lies with this. Uh, that you understand that it is necessary to finish the capitalist system before it finishes the human race. 
el sistema capitalista antes de que el, el termine con la raza humana. And that really there's nothing more important in your life than that. There isn't que, anything more important than that. Pensarlo, no hay nada más importante en nuestras vidas. We're talking about the future of the human race, neither more nor less. Estamos hablando del futuro de la raza humana, ni más ni menos. And therefore I am convinced that you will do the necessary thing. And we'll do everything in your power to help us to carry out this important work. And be sure of one thing. Is it difficult? Of course it's difficult. Nothing worthwhile in life is, is ever easy, you know. Oh, it's difficult. Difficult, yes. Impossible, no. Necessary, yes. And be sure of one thing. Once we succeed in gathering sufficient forces, that's the point. Gathering and organizing and educating. The forces of the Revolutionary Party internationally. 30 minutes gone. Then together, together, we can carry on the struggle that uh, Trotsky dedicated his whole life to. Along with countless other mar martyrs of the revolution. And for which he paid for his life. To, to carry that struggle to a final and victorious conclusion. Now I've run out of time. And I will close this remarkable school. I can't think of anything more appropriate to say to you and I say this to each one of you personally. The final words that Trotsky pronounced as he lay dying, I am sure of the victory of the Fourth International. Go forward. Adelante. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Alan for that marvelous summing up of the school. And now uh, it's my um, duty to bring matters to an end. It's uh, absolutely true. It's been a fantastic event that we've received many messages of support from around the world, thanking us for this school. What a wonderful event it's been. And therefore this has had a, a major impact. But now's the time to start work. It says that we have, um, have a long history, which is true. But now we want to make history. Of course, there are many opportunities coming in our direction. World revolution is on the order of the day in the next period. And therefore, we have to build the ideas and build the organization of Marxism internationally. So don't be shy, comrades. Step up. Join the revolution and prepare for the victory of the working class. I say, long live the working class, long live the socialist revolution, long live the IMT. Victory, comrades, is ours. Victory. We like to end this... Uh, school as we end all events with the rendition of the Internationale. So I hand it over to you. <laughs>